In this topic, we're going to discuss the genetic code. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is a gene? What is the triplet code and what are the features of the triplet code? Genes are sequences of nucleotides on a DNA molecule that code for a polypeptide. And polypeptides combine to form proteins, as you can see in this diagram. This means that genes determine the proteins of an organism. Remember that enzymes are also proteins, and enzymes control the chemical reactions, so they control the development and activities of an organism. In other words, genes determine the nature and development of all organisms. If a gene is a sequence of nucleotides that determines a sequence of amino acids, how does this happen? What is the code? Proteins show almost infinite variety. This variety depends on the sequence of amino acids in each protein. There are just 20 amino acids that regularly occur in proteins, and each must have its own code of nucleotide bases on the DNA. Here you can see different amino acids represented by the circles and their corresponding DNA bases. Let's have a look at the triplet code. You've got only four different bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, present in DNA. Now, if each of these coded for a different amino acid, how many amino acids would you have? Only four, and this is inadequate because we need at least 20. If you use a pair of bases, for example, guanine and cytosine, or guanine and thymine, how many different amino acids would you get? You'd only get 16. This is still inadequate. If you use a triplet of bases, for example, guanine, cytosine, and adenine, this will produce 64 different codes, which is more than enough to satisfy the requirements of 20 amino acids. So how did we work this out? Well, you say 4, because you've got 4 different bases, to the power of n. n representing the number of bases in the code. So 64 is equal to 4 to the power of 3. This three base code is called the triplet code. Although there are only four different bases in DNA, there are numerous combinations of these bases. Right, let's have a look at the features of the triplet code. A few amino acids have only a single triplet code. For example, tryptophan is only coded by UGG. Here you've got a table of the triplet codes that code for amino acids. How do you read a table like this? Well, if you're given an mRNA sequence, for example, AUG, GCU, GAU, and AGG, you need to find the corresponding amino acid sequence using this table. The first step is to divide the sequence up into triplet codes, which have three letters per triplet. Then you look up each triplet in the table. So let's start with AUG. You find the first base on the left where it's written A. The second base, which is at the top, where it's written U. And the third base, which is on the very right, which is G. And you draw a line from all of these so you should find the first amino acid is going to be methionine. What about GCU? It's going to be alanine. GAU? Aspartic acid. And finally AGG. It's going to be arginine. So you should find the amino acid sequence methionine, alanine, aspartic acid, and arginine. So those amino acids that don't just have one codon will have more than or two or more codons each. For example, leucine can be coded for by six different codons. The codons are always read in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction.
And we say that the code is degenerate. Almost all amino acids have more than one triplet code. The start of a sequence is always AUG. This codes for the amino acid, methionine. If this first methionine molecule does not form part of the final polypeptide, it's going to be removed later. Three codons, UAA, UAG, and UGA, do not code for any amino acids. These are called stop codes and mark the end of a polypeptide chain. They act in much the same way as a full stop at the end of a sentence. We say that the code is non-overlapping. That is, each base in the sequence is read only once. For example, if you have six bases numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they're going to be read as triplets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 instead of 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6. Non-overlapping codes need more bases, but are less likely to be affected by error. Now, some viruses with limited amounts of DNA use overlapping codes, but this is extremely rare. And finally, we say that it's a universal code. That is, it's the same in all organisms, or almost. There are differences in some protoctists and in the DNA of mitochondria and chloroplasts. And as I mentioned before, it's degenerate, which means that almost all amino acids have more than one triplet code. Here's the standard genetic code represented by DNA sequences. This is found in your Jones textbook. You use it much in the same way as the RNA genetic code. Here's a sequence of DNA. Use this table to find out what the corresponding amino acid sequence will be. You should have found that it will be methionine, valine, lysine and glutamic acid. Right, what have we looked at in this lesson? A few amino acids have only a single triplet code. The re remaining excuse me, amino acids have between two and six codons each. The codon is read in a five prime to three prime direction. We say that the code is degenerate. Amino acids have more than one triplet code. The start codon is AUG, and this code's for methionine. The stop codes are UAA, UAG and UGA. The code is non-overlapping and it's universal. And that concludes our lesson, the end.